Hey, what's up, everyone? We're here with the man, the legend, Al the Yeti. Al, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, Al, you've been on the music scene for the last 15 years. I mean, really, you're a man that needs uh, no introduction. You've accomplished so much. You've toured all over North America. You've been written out, written about all over the world. Uh, your main bo uh, bands being, starting in 1999, uh, Mr. Bones, and then uh, from 04 to 06, The Mighty Nimbus, with uh, former members of 60 Watt Shaman, and then... Uh, George and Skull, 06 to 09, and Gypsy Chief Goliath, uh, 2009 to present. I remember uh, the very first time I saw you. It was probably 12, 13 years ago. It was at the Sunnyside Tavern, and I was a pretty young, impressionable man then, and uh, Mr. Bones had played. And I remember seeing you out on that, that back patio, and uh, you're staying there. It was like dark outside, and you had your aviators on and the beard. And I just remember thinking, that is the most badass-looking motherfucker I've ever seen before. Thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you. So anyways, tell me about the early days. Tell me about uh, that moment when you were a kid, when you when you knew you had to start playing music. Um, yeah, it goes it goes to like back to like bands like ACDC and Guns N' Roses, I think. Um, those were the first bands that I remember... Um, and then I went into Black Sabbath right away. Uh, but after that, I mean, started listening to bands like Caius, Blues for the Red Sun, when it came out in like 95, changed my life. I was in grade nine at Kennedy. and uh, By Caius? Yeah. Oh, cool. And uh, just, it it became, I think I think it was the first time I actually ever noticed that there was going to be, there was going to be music out there that uh, wasn't, wasn't exactly like refined you know it wasn't really put together um like made for hits you know and for some reason i still liked it you know but that was like the first you know um of that kind of wave of bands that really just kind of set the the whole mood for later on i realized like i'm like oh well i'm probably not going to write a song as good as back in black ever but i could probably write a song as good as green machine you know and um and so I just started getting back into like heavily, you know, going back and further into uh, different bands like Sleep, and then uh, High and Fire uh, came out, and that love was... those fucking. I got to open for that man. That was like my greatest moment in oh, mu yeah. in music so far. Is getting yeah, with, to open uh, with, for them with Bosch. Yeah, yeah. It was them, Priestess, Priestess. and uh, Skeleton Witch. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Such a good good lineup. So different from each other too. Like yeah, all four bands, just way yeah. different. But um, yeah, it was just I think I think it was uh, was pretty much really into uh, rock and roll, but like the heavier stuff too, you know. And and then then I got into death metal, um, Carcass and Entombed. And then a few years later, I got to I got to tour the states with Entombed, and then Entombed signed the Mighty Nimbus to their record label, which was uh, called Three Man Records. And then when Entombed when Entombed uh, signed with Candlelight, they brought us over as well. So then we got signed by Candlelight with, with Entombed at that time, and then they put us on tour with Crowbar, and it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, listened. Uh, I got into Down right away. Um, you know, I was big into Pantera at the time. And I was like, man, like, if these guys could just be, you know, like COC, you know, because I was listening to Corrosion as well at the time, who we got to tour with as well. But uh, just once, once corrosion. Once I heard Deliverance, it was like, this is this is it. You know, this is like the Sabbath riffs with like more aggressive vocals and just really sludgy and groovy. And then, um, but I loved Phil's voice. You know, and uh, I thought, you know, obviously Dime was a great guitar player and amazing, just a riff master. But for some reason, I gravitated more towards Down as I started hearing more. And then once I got into Nola. Um, it was over. My life ended. <laughs> it was ruined. 
Yeah, I think uh, in your in your current band, Gypsy Chief Goliath, uh, you can, you can hear those influences certainly, yeah. but you got you guys have something else, and I I can't quite put my finger on it. It's uh, it, it's the way that it it sounds like uh, it's not taking itself too seriously almost. Sure. You know, sure. um, that that melody is there, and I mean. Uh, you're, uh, I'm really glad you picked up the guitar in this band. When you, but I mean, even even when you guys first started, um, you were just you're just doing vocals. And I have right. to say, man, your your vocal delivery is so uh, interesting. I mean, Thanks. and uh, it's so you. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people say to me that uh, when they hear me recorded, like that, you know, like the the person doesn't match up to the voice. It's like, man, I didn't expect that from you. Like, but I mean, when you see you, it's like, yeah, this is definitely the the guy singing on this track. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and then, I mean, the Southern rock as well. That's the one thing I, I, I really like about uh, what we do is that we'll always approach heavier material in a classic rock form, you know, and make sure that it's like, at least there's like a musical sensibility to it. I don't want to do like too much explosiveness and, um, you know, these breakdowns that are just, you know, just for the sake of a breakdown, you know, you like, it's like, okay, let's write a song and then breakdown goes here it's like we've never really yeah. thought of you know music as that way like let's do a breakdown or or whatever it's like usually our breakdowns consist of like guitar harmonies and you know things like that so yeah, yeah. always uh because thin lizzie's like i think the most overrated or most underrated band of all time i think people are always like uh boys are back in town jailbreak whiskey in the jar it's like I don't know, you know, those are like three songs that I never listened to yeah. by them, you know. That, that's the double-edged sword of, uh, of the radio thing, I think. Um, you get a few songs played, and that's then a lot of the times that's all that people know you for, and they don't see that in the context of the your entire body of work, whether it be that album or like your whole discography. Right. But I mean, still, it's maybe it's better to have that than having them uh, never heard you at all. And well, I mean, a, a lot of the time, I think bands, the song that they would like least want the the single or the radio hit to be is is the one that it ends up being. And um, you know, maybe if they had like their choice of it, they would have more appealed to the audience they, that they wanted to have appealed. Oh, to. for sure. And I think that's uh, that's too much too much of the record label putting their nose in to a position where it doesn't belong. But uh, at the same time. You know, they know what sells records and bands a lot of time don't. So, yeah. um, you know, hence boys are back in town. And like going back to what we were talking about, all the likes. I mean, we land like the social proof thing. We hold these numbers in such high regard. And uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay. status, man. It's there, just status. There could be a million views for some awesome video. And then 50 million views for like the world's biggest fucking abscess getting like drained of its pus in some fucking backyard, you know? Yep. And it's like, fuck, I can't compete with that much pus. It's almost no. impossible. It's a lot of pus. Man. It is impossible. Yep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. We yep. just don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, um, but it seems like you turn them out pretty fucking fast. Or or maybe you're just one of those guys who's got uh, an armory of, of riffs. And I mean, you've been at I think it for it's a so bit of long. Both. Yeah? Yeah, it's a bit of both. I have, um, you know... <laughs> they fucking scare me, man. <laughs> they, uh, the... I, I got, like, uh, a lot of demos from years ago that really didn't... We didn't really do anything with. And, uh, you know, in between bands... You know, I probably could have recorded three albums, you know, yeah. with 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 that material. Um, but a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff uh, happens um, kind of organically, I guess. You know, it's uh, I get really pissed off because when when everything's going well in my life, there's no reason to write. You know, I, I kind of just don't pick up the guitar. I don't pick up paper. You know, I'm not writing at all. I'm not going upstairs, you know, and, and getting time to myself and, and doing that. Um, because I know that when I was doing that, I was like extremely depressed and I was like very, um, introverted, you know, and, and, and I don't like being that way, you know, and I'm not, I don't think I'm generally like that. Um, but when I get into like modes, you know, writing modes, um, they're like, they're like the winter season, you know, it's just, I yeah. just want to fucking want to just close myself off from the rest of the world and write. 
Um, and I do that every once in a while, but like it takes me a lot longer as I get older to get out of those funks, you know? So I'll get into that situation where I'll write for days and I'll write a pile of shit and it's like, um, you know, stress at work and then stress at home and you know everything everything co compounds on top of each other from from just from writing you know so I, I tend to stay away from it and uh you know when it comes to me and it's like i can't get over it and stuff you know it's like it's like those those creative ideas they when they pop up into your head it's like if you don't write them down or if you don't go upstairs and record them right away they're gone you yeah. know so um they happen fewer and far between now because i'm happy you know my life like yeah yeah i'm married i have a baby you know i have a house <laughs> like we're, we're good you know and, yeah. and and there's no reason to to write and be pissed off but then i sometimes do it to myself and like i'll purposely lock myself in and you know and shut everybody out for a couple of days and uh <laughs> and just fucking. So you're more of a binge writer type thing. Yeah, yeah, rather for sure. Than packing out a little bit. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it uh, it happens that way. So then, what's interesting about that is is that, like you said, binge writing. Like with with binge writing, it's like you end up uh, writing something completely like totally different than what you would normally write. You know, because it's like it's just you're not you're not in the practice every day so it's it's not like you're you're trying to um do the same thing over again but just better or trying to refine your craft it's like you know you're you're definitely like you know for those months or whatever that i wasn't writing i was listening to completely different music you know so it's like something else is striking me you know in a certain way that it's like oh man i don't know this isn't really gypsy chief stuff but this could be solo stuff you know and then start writing that shit and then i play it for the guys and they're like no man this is totally cool we could totally yeah it's, it's kind of weird how that happens so fast hey eh? when you start a band um suddenly you have all these songs that don't fit into that band but yeah. you wrote them yeah. and i mean maybe that's for the best like i you for might sure. you might have this too but i have uh songs that i've written for like ex-girlfriends and stuff that are just really stock chord progressions and they're really nice songs but i mean it doesn't it doesn't really belong on an album of hard rock material at sure, all, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, in the same in the same vein, I remember Dave Gold once told me uh, we were talking on the phone, and uh, he he was he was saying he's like he's like so this is it, eh? And I was like, yeah, I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over from from George and Skull to I'm gonna start a band called Gypsy Chief Goliath. And he's like, are you sure, man? Like like you know, you just paved. A certain road for so long you know uh with with mr bones and then georgian like you don't want to just keep even at it like even even though the guys all left and you know one of the guys went to rehab and the other guys left they disappeared you don't want to just keep like doing that like you know you've already set the precedent with you know mr bones like you've had a million band members you know like why don't you just keep doing that you know and just keep building your brand and I was like, you know what? I think the brand comes from, I think the brand is that I start different bands. You know, I think that's what it's, that's what it's amounting to, you know? Yeah. Cause you're going, you're going through uh, different phases of your life. Right. And, and obviously, um, whatever members you were playing with at whatever time had a varying degree of maybe influence or no, part, for sure. partaking in the writing as well. So how for can sure. you, uh, how can you try to fill their shoes? Absolutely. You know? And I think all the while, I think that was subconscious in the back of my head is, is the whole reason why I went with like the name, you know, Al the Yeti Bones and, you know, that kind of thing, like, like branded myself as that name because there's a lot of people named Alex Petrovich, you know, but there's only one Al the Yeti Bones, you know what I mean? So it's like if Al the Yeti Bones is like the leader or the front man of this band or that band or that band or whatever, it's like... It, it's okay to like start a new band. It's fine, you know. It's it's completely fine with me. I can go solo too, like and 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 do something like that, which would be nice, you know. That's that's kind of like what I've been trying to do, and I'm gonna put out a solo record in August, and it's just gonna be quick and easy, and and that's it, and you know. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of that stuff, and that's cool too. Thanks. <laughs> Back and forth and driving